Good morning students, this is Mr. Boscarini and for today's lesson we are going to talk about density. In the previous lesson we have discussed the concepts of mass and volume, we've seen how we can measure the mass of an object, we've seen different strategies to measure the volume of objects depending whether they were regular shaped solid, regular shaped solid, liquids and so on. Uh, today we're going to see how the concepts of mass and volume combine to define what is density. So that is our first learning objective for today, define the density of an object and then we will see that there is an equation, a formula that links together the mass of an object, its volume and this concept of density. To understand why we have to introduce a new physical quantity, uh, let's get back to um, uh, to mass. Okay, so uh, it is common knowledge that some substances, some elements or compounds are heavier than others. And just to make an example, we can think about lead, which is a very, let's say, heavy metal, and wood. No, it, it's common knowledge that an object made of metal is heavier than an object made of wood. But is this always true? And one thing we have to um, really uh, stress here is that heavier normally is linked with weight. In this case, we refer to mass. So let's imagine we have two objects made respectively of uh, lead and wood. A bullet, at least the head of a bullet, is made of lead and a tree, at least most of the tree, is made of wood. Now I hope there is no um, doubt here that the heavier, or what, let's say the object with more mass, is the tree. So this is not always true. So what is the difference between these two? Of course, it's the volume, so the amount of space these two objects take. It is for this reason that we need to introduce a new physical quantity. Something that takes uh, into consideration both the mass of an object and its volume. This quantity is density. Now, uh, in general, density can be uh, described as a way of saying how closely packed the molecules or the atoms of a substance are packed together. So let's imagine if it's in the same volume, the, the molecules are more closely packed together, you have more molecules and that means you have a bigger density. If the same molecules are more spread out, you have a lower density. Take into account the two physical quantities we have explored before, that is mass and density, uh, mass and volume, sorry, we're going to say the density is defined as the ratio, that means the division between the mass of an object and its volume. Density equals mass divided by volume is a physical equation, one of the, uh, the first of many that we're going to meet in this um, physics course. But this is very similar to what you will see in chemistry, a word equation. So we, you have a relationship between quantities and they are defined by words. So see the word mass, the word volume, the word density. But in real science, most of the time, we prefer to represent these quantities with symbols because it's easier, it's faster. So instead of using this so-called word equation, we're going to use this one on the right, a symbol equation. Um, and probably you can recognize some of the symbols small m stands for mass, big V stands for volume, and this strange letter, this is not a P, this is a Greek letter, rho, and in many textbooks, including yours, is used to define density. So we don't use small d, we're going to use this Greek letter. So this is the equation we're going to use from now on. Now, no definition of a physical quantity is complete, if you don't also define the units of measurements. Now, in the international, in general, uh, obviously, uh, since density equal to mass divided by volume, you expect that the units of density are given by a unit of mass 
divided by a unit of volume. In international system, the base unit for mass is the kilogram, the base unit for volume is a cubic meter, so no surprises here, the base unit for density in international system is the kilogram per cubic meter, or in symbols, kilograms times to the minus 3. It will turn out that we're not going to use this unit a lot. Rather, we're going to use a subunit, actually this is the most commonly used, which is the gram per cubic centimeter. In the same way I told you before, I told you that most of the time we're going to have masses in grams, we're going to have volumes in cubic centimeters, therefore we will have densities in grams over cubic centimeters, or gram per centimeters to the minus 3. At this point, it's also important to understand how we can go from one unit to another. As we say, how can we convert? And we'll see that the result is a bit unexpected. Let, let, let's look at the case of when I want to convert one kilogram per cubic meter in, in, in the equivalent amount in grams of a cubic meters. Now, first of all, one kilogram over cubic meters is one kilogram divided by a cubic meter. Now, let's transform the kilograms in grams, that is 1,000 grams, but one cubic meter, that is one million cubic centimeters. We saw that already in the video about volume. Now, if you divide these two quantities, first of all, you take away one zero above, one zero below, one zero above, one zero below, and so on, you end up with 1 over 1,000. Or, if you do this calculation, it will be 0 0.001 grams over cubic uh, centimeters. So this is a bit counterintuitive. You would expect uh, this number to be bigger than this one. You, you think, oh, 1 kilogram, that is 1,001. It's because of a volume. It's because of a volume at the denominator. At this point, it shouldn't come as a surprise to understand that if we reverse this uh, equivalence, you will see that one gram per cubic centimeter is, a, is equal to 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. And the key point is here, yes, a kilogram is bigger than a gram, but a cubic meter is huge compared to a cubic centimeter. So you need a lot of those to make a kilogram over cubic meters. Um, in the activities in class, we're going to find out the density of different objects, but it's already important for you to understand more or less what are the values that we're going to meet. Let's start, uh, first of all, uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise, I will expect, since density is a definition of how closely packed are molecules in an object, I would expect that in general gases are less dense than liquids and in turn liquids are less dense than solids. And that is in general true. And of course I'm going to show you some counter examples. But let's start with air. Now that mixture of gases that we breathe every day, the density of air is 0 0.0013 grams of a cubic centimeters. What does that mean? It means if I take a cubic centimeter of air, the mass of that air is 0 0.001 grams. If we take a cubic meter of air, that air will have a mass of 1.3 kilograms. So let's move forward. What is our next substance? Oh, water. Now, water turns out has a density, a very precise density, and there's an historical reason for that, uh, of one gram over cubic centimeters. And the reason it's such a precise number is because actually water was initially chosen as a reference for mass. So basically, it was chosen so that one cubic centimeter of water the one gram was equivalent to the mass of one cubic centimeter of water. Now, using the equivalence we've seen before, we multiply this number by a thousand to get the same density, but in kilograms 
of a cubic meters. What does it mean? Again, if I take a cubic meter of water, that will have a mass of one kilo, uh, 1,000 kilograms. So we have seen gas, we have seen a liquid, and now we have a solid. And apparently our pattern holds. No? This is less dense than the liquid, the liquid is less dense than a solid. Aluminium. And I can already hear the American say, oh, it's not spelled this way. Actually, it is spelled this way, but there is a story behind the different way you can spell the name of this very common metal. Now, the um, density of aluminium is 2.7 grams of a cubic centimeter. That means a cubic meter of aluminium has a really is really massive is 2700 kilograms and now we come to another solid and here our pattern is broken because ice which you know is frozen water so water as a solid has a density which is lower than the density of water slightly but yet lower so 0.92 grams of a cubic centimeter and that is the reason of why ice floats in water, why you have icebergs floating in the ocean, although the ocean is salt water, so it's also a little bit more um, dense than pure water. Still, uh, because of the way ice crystals forms, ice turns out to have a smaller density. This is something you can experience yourself. If you fill a, water, a bottle with water and you freeze it, you'll see that the water will expand, the same mass will occupy a bigger volume. And finally we have something that completely breaks our pattern. Mercury. Mercury is a metal, right? But it's a liquid. And incredibly, it's one of the densest material you can find on Earth. 13.6 grams of a cubic centimeters. That means a cubic meter of mercury, which by the way is extremely toxic, so you better not to have it around, has a mass of 13,000 600 kilograms. But just to finish, we've seen how we can find the density of an object if we know its mass or its volume. What if we want instead to find the mass or the volume? Uh, one easy way is by using what we call the magic triangle. And this is something we're going to use a lot, especially in the uh, next parts of our physics course for speed or for force. As you can see here, you see the symbols for mass, volume, and density. And the magic triangle works in a very easy way. You have to cover the quantity you want to find. So let's imagine, I want to find the mass. I cover the mass, and guess what? Mass is given by volume times density, or density times volume. There it is. What if I want to find the volume? I move my hand. And this line stands for division. Okay, density, well, that we knew already that equation, mass over volume. And to finish, if I want to find the volume, there you go, it's mass divided by density. Now, in class, we're going to see some examples how to calculate uh, mass or volume density with numerical examples. But that's all for today. Goodbye from Mr. Boscari.